Hello everyone, welcome back. I hope you all are doing good. So in this video, we are going to cover two important terms which are used in clinical practice. That is bacteremia and septicemia. These terms are actually used to define a condition which represent the presence of bacteria in blood. But do you know most of the times these terms are used interchangeably. But in actual, these are different from each other. So let's see how the characteristics of bacteremia and septicemia are different from each other with the help of this video. So let's start. So here we'll be talking about first point of difference that is definition. If we talk about bacteremia, then always remember this term bacteremia has been originated from the Greek and Latin words, right? Where the meaning of bacter is bacteria and emia is blood. It means bacteremia represent a kind of condition for the presence of bacteria in the bloodstream, right? Now, if we talk about septicemia, just like bacteremia, septicemia term has also originated from Greek and Latin words. But here, the words are sepsis and emia. If we talk about sepsis, the meaning of sepsis is putrid or rotten and emia is blood. It means rotten blood or putrid blood. That's why septicemia is actually defined as a kind of blood poisoning which is caused by the presence and multiplication of bacteria in the bloodstream. So simply we can say that just simple presence of bacteria in the bloodstream is called as bacteremia, but the presence along with multiplication of the bacteria in the bloodstream, which is resulting in a kind of blood poisoning for this type of condition, we use the term septicemia, right? Now let's take the second point of difference, severity. If we talk about severity, then bacteremia is not very much severe or we can say it shows mild severity. And if we talk about septicemia, septicemia is a more severe condition. It actually leads to generally widespread and potentially life-threatening infections. So we can say that septicemia is a kind of dangerous condition when we compare it with that of bacteremia, which is less harmful, right? Let's take the third point of difference, common causes. If we talk about common causes, means what are the reasons why bacteremia actually results, then you should know that bacteremia, that is the presence of bacteria in the bloodstream, usually results from minor infections or wound or dental procedures can lead to the condition like bacteremia, like tooth extraction is there, vigorous brushing we are going to do, then bacteremia can result, injection or catheter usage. Now, if we talk about septicemia, then always remember septicemia results either from the progression of bacteremia. It means bacteria which have entered through these minor practices into the bloodstream. Initially, they were just present, but now they have started their multiplication or they are increasing in number and they are going to lead to some kind of blood poisoning. In this way, we can say that progression of bacteremia can actually result in what? Septicemia. And another reason is what? Another reason is that suppose an infection is there in some other part of the body, like, like lungs are infected, abdomen infection is there, urinary tract infections are there, and those infections, say, are bacteria-mediated. They are bacterial infections. If through those infections, bacteria along with their toxins or virulence factors gain entry in the bloodstream, then in this way, those type of infection can easily spread throughout the body. And this can lead to what? Damage of the bodily tissues. Right. So in this way, septicemia kind of conditions are resulted. Now let's talk about the fourth point of difference, toxin production. If we talk about toxin production, then always remember in case of bacteremia, toxin production is not usually reported. Right. And if we talk about septicemia, yes, toxin may be produced, uh, but it depends on what the kind of causal agent. What kind of causal agent is going to cause septicemia? Say it is gram negative bacteria which are capable of producing what? Endotoxins. Then of course, there is good possibility that those toxins can also be released or they can be uh, there in the bloodstream. So in this case, we can say that toxin may be produced. Now let's talk about the fifth point of difference, symptoms. If we talk about symptoms, then always remember bacteremia is typically asymptomatic kind of condition, right? It shows no symptoms generally, but in certain cases, it can show mild symptoms like fever. And if we talk about septicemia, in case of septicemia, yes, symptoms are there because it is a kind of symptomatic condition. 
it shows high fever chills high rate of respiration and heart and possibly organ dysfunction is also observed in case of septicemia right now let's take the next point of difference treatment if we talk about treatment then you should know that in case of bacteremia the body can recover from the bacteremia condition on its own or we can say bacteremia can be rapidly removed from the blood stream by the natural or normal immune system of the body on the other hand if it is somewhat serious or mild severity it is going to show then of course it may require antibiotics depending on the cause now let's talk about septicemia in case of septicemia it always require treatment always require what aggressive antibiotic therapy and supportive care is needed often in hospital settings and always remember condition like septicemia always represent what or always give a clue towards medical emergency now let's talk about seventh point of difference that is complications progression risk if we talk about complications or progression risk then in case of bacteremia generally low risk is there low risk for what complications if treated appropriately occasionally it can lead to what septicemia and sepsis it means septicemia which is the progression of bacteremia as earlier we have discussed it can occasionally result from bacteremia right now let's talk about complications of septicemia septicemia is actually having high risk of complication associated with it like it can lead to sepsis or it can lead to septic shock if not treated timely now question comes what is this sepsis and what is this septic shock then you should know sepsis is actually a kind of life threatening condition which arises from what which arises from the over immune response shown by the body and that over immune response which was actually shown towards the bacterial infection it will now start affecting our own body tissue right or it will start affecting what organs of the body and if we talk about septic shock septic shock is the next stage to the sepsis here multiple organs start to undergo failure right they start to become non functional right why because septic shock is a kind of condition where actually a drop down occur in case of blood pressure and this lower blood pressure is responsible for what is responsible for multiple organ failures and septic shock kind of conditions in most of the cases is untreatable and it leads to what death right so if here we talk on the basis of severity then we can say that bacteremia is a kind of condition which we can say is least harmful if we talk about septicemia septicemia is more harmful if we talk about sepsis sepsis is most harmful or most dangerous and if we talk about septic shock which is the last stage and it can in most of the cases leads to what multiple organ failure and death of the individual right so in this way high risk of complications are associated with what septicemia let's talk about causal agents if we talk about causal agents then always remember bacteremia as its name is indicating it is caused by what bacteria right and most of the bacteremia cases have been found to be associated with the presence of staphylococcus aureus streptococcus and e coli in blood right now if we talk about septicemia septicemia actually can result from the presence of different kind of pathogens in the blood stream it could be bacteria it could be fungi it could be viruses and other parasites but always remember in most of the cases bacteria is responsible for causing septicemia and if we talk about bacteria then among bacteria more than 50% cases are actually uh, uh, reported with staphylococci presence in blood stream causing septicemia and if we talk about other bacteria then streptococcus pyogenes e coli klebsiella species these are other bacterial species which leads to what septicemia and in addition to this candida species which is a kind of yeast it is also very much responsible for the cases of septicemia right reported till date now let's talk about the nine point of difference that is clinical significance if we talk about bacteremia then always remember bacteremia is clinically less significant but it becomes significant in immunocompromised or high risk patients right and if we talk about septicemia then always septicemia is clinical clinically significant due to high risk of sepsis and motility associated with septic shock so this was all about our today's video i hope the content i am going to share through this platform is really going to help many of you thank you so much keep watching